very grateful to Matt, to organizers of the event, uh, suggested uh, that I say a little bit here. I'm really grateful that you want to know uh, what is happening in Russia, why it is happening, and what can be done about it. Uh, uh, I'm sure that many of you saw uh, that uh, flood of highly disturbing photos and videos that was distributed across social networks showing uh, uh, Russian LGBT teenagers uh, tortured and abused by some thugs. And no one who saw that can remain just calm and indifferent. But however, we have to, uh, in order to do something, we have to stop being emotional and uh, process it in some some somewhat coherent way. So I just want to give you a little bit of context for that and uh, say what you can be do can do here in Ireland. Uh, one thing is that uh, Russia is, uh, even though in Russia homosexuality was decriminalized in the same year as uh, it was in, in Ireland, the year 1993, the story is entirely different. Here in Ireland, it was a consequence of uh, more than 15 years of uh, uh, consistent fight for gay rights. In Russia, uh, it was not the case at all. Uh, Russia, in the year 1993, was highly concerned about joining the European Council. And to do that, they somehow took that momentary decision to grant uh, uh, at least something, to uh, repeal uh, that uh, part of the criminal code uh, for, uh, because of which you could go to prison because of being gay. Being gay. And uh, uh, so, uh, since it just fell from the sky into people's hands without any uh, discussion, without any educating, uh, edu education. Of course, it, it, it is taking an awful long time, uh, it's taking the Russian society to get used to it, to get used to the concept. What is really terrible, what is really disgraceful, is that the current Russian government is using that huge momentum necessary to change anything, using it in its purposes, using it to maintain, maintain the stability of the current regime. Uh, because uh, Russian gays are still afraid to come out to even closest friends, most Russian people don't even realize that they have gay friends and acquaintances, acquaintances and rely in their judgment on some ridiculous stereotypes. A, equating gay to feminine, equating gay to flamboyant, even worse, spectacularly worse, equating gays to pedophiles, equating gays, uh, gay relationships to prison rapes, whatever. Uh, the current uh, Russian government, uh, Russian officials, are not trying to denounce those misguided ideas, uh, how they are uh, even encouraging and endorsing uh, uh, extremist groups and religious fanatics who beat up gays at uh, uh, demonstrations and protests. Uh, this is combined with a, a roller coaster of uh, other actions that the Russian government takes to maintain the stability of its regime. Many of you would have heard about the Pussy Riot case case, the Blotnest Square case, the recent introduction of blasphemy law in Russia, and even the, the most recent absolutely disgraceful situation with a detention camp for illegal migrants in Moscow suburbs. Uh, this sort of blending of nationalism, xenophobia, and ambitions to be a superpower state that cannot be uh, told what to do and what not to do, is somehow feels like a stroll down the memory lane to the Soviet Union from the time of the Cold War. And, of course, eventually, Russia will lose that war, as the Soviet Union did. But in order to do so, we have to ensure that we act in most determined and coherent way. Uh, even though, for us, here and now, gay rights violations might be the most important thing that matters, we should remember that this is just uh, the tip of an iceberg, that uh, uh, there is a huge problem with human rights in general in Russia. Finally, what can and what should be done? 
I think, I strongly believe that, as in the case with the Cold War, uh, it's, uh, it's a highly political situation. It's the world leaders and uh, powerful international organizations that should actually uh, do something, should make a difference. Currently, the International Olympic Committee assumes an incredibly cowardly position, saying that the athletes who will publicly express support of the LGBT cause will be, during the Olympics will be punished. Uh, most political leaders of Western countries keep silent and do not do anything about the situation. These leaders have to speak up and express uh, uh, their concern with uh, the human rights situation in Russia in the strongest possible terms. It is, fortunately, we see it's not, it, it, it's not impossible at all. Uh, in, in the last week, uh, uh, in the news, you, you, you would hear that uh, two uh, people from Denmark, the Crown Prince Frederick, who is the member uh, of the International Olympic Committee from Denmark, and uh, the uh, Danish Minister of Foreign Affairs, Willy Sondal, became wonderfully vocal about the situation. Uh, the Danish Foreign Minister promised to raise uh, this question in the next meeting of the European Council in September, which is incredibly important. I remind you that uh, uh, desire to, to be on the European Council is what made Russia decriminalize homosexuality in the first place. So, this, however, is, uh, these are tiny little steps in the right direction, and we should continue uh, putting pressure on politicians and organizations so that uh, not only Denmark, all European countries, including Ireland, follow this wonderful example. So, please, do what you can to increase that awareness. Explain what you just heard to other people you know. Write letters to your TVs. Demand action from the Minister of Foreign Affairs. It's time to stop being emotional. It's time to make a difference. Thank you.